Right, thank you very much. Um, yes, as, as uh, Dick said, I'm Pierre Luigi Budici from the Alfred Wegener Institute, and I'm representing quite a team of people, as you can tell by the logos all over my cover slide. Very good logos. Um, right, and we are attempting to make best practice documents and methodology more fair um, in the same way that data is being made fair, so that we can reach out to broader audiences and consolidate effort across the ocean observing community. Um, this is coming out of Atlantos. Many of you have heard of this project. And indeed, it is in the spirit of Atlantos to attempt to better coordinate and consolidate what are currently distributed efforts through ocean science. In particular, Work Package 6 is tasked with um, improving how we handle best practices and how we disseminate them through the wider ocean observation community. Um, it's a whole system behind it, and I'm certainly not going to talk about all of this today. I'll be focusing just on the technology side. Um, there will be a presentation tomorrow. Um, by Peter Bitsiersens and Christian Munoz, who will talk about the larger aspects of the system and how all these pieces fit together. But here we're going to focus on the technology that we're using to attempt to make best practices more fair. So right now, the status quo looks something like this. More or less, you have people in different settings generating best practice documents using all sorts of technology in all sorts of formats. And they're somehow put together, often compiled at the end of a project, into a PDF and archived on some sort of international uh, website or project website, which may or may not last. We never know. Um, so then when one of our people at the Avi comes back from the cold, far reaches of the north or the south, they come home and they're like, what do I do? Especially our students. What do I do? What's the best practice to analyze this ice core? And so they look online. Um, they look online through various sites. Sometimes they find something that's, that's present on an institutional or project archive. Sometimes it's not there anymore. The websites go defunct, etc. And so we need to improve that situation to make that a little bit more stable. So that's the situation that we're, we're facing. So here's our mission, to attempt to make a fairer future for ocean best practices in the same spirit as fairness is applied to data and information products. The basis of that is the UNESCO IOC IODE Ocean Best Practices Archive. This has been in operation for quite a long time. It's available at oceanbestpractices.net, and it provides an interface for you to upload best practices so that they can be archived in the long term. They're assigned DOIs, they have metadata fields, they're indexed by <coughs> search engines, so that is present and it's well supported. You'll be in good company. Quite a lot of ocean observing networks do submit to the oceanbestpractices.net archive. So that's the findable, yes, they're accessible, yes, and you can reuse them in the sense that you can reuse methodology, so that's all right. But the interoperability was something that we wanted to focus on to improve. And so we started to add semantic technology to attempt to interlink these best practices in a more efficient way. To look a little bit more closely at that interoperability aspect in FAIR, you'll notice in I1 that it's about using formal, accessible, shared, and broadly applicable language for knowledge representation. And that's what I'd like to underscore. We have very good vocabularies, but when we're dealing with things that are a little bit more subtly different from one another, we need to actually represent the knowledge a bit more carefully to leverage the vocabularies that we have, but perhaps extend the model a little bit. So to do that, we're using semantic technology that targets that knowledge level. And there's a gradient of semantic technology. And we are beginning by aiming quite high on that gradient. So that's machine expressibility up in the ontology world. Now, with that expressibility, we can start to disambiguate certain terms, especially because certain terminology is used by different disciplines. We're in a multidisciplinary space. So we need the ability to differentiate how those things are used. Um, we are using the OBO Foundry and Library stack of ontologies, uh, starting with Envo, because that's what I, I work with. So that was a place to start. It also contains the semantics to describe environments, ocean environments, cryosphere environments, etc. And we've been developing that for some years. And it's nested within a federation of other ontologies that are networked through OBO best practices it's, itself. So we're building from existing technology stacks. Um, it interoperates at a very core level with other ontologies in the OBO federation, including for genes and biological processes, chemicals and KEBI, populations and community, food ontologies, ecological ontologies, new agronomy and agriculture ontonomy, um, ontologies. And it's, we're mapping right now to some of the ESIP resources with Lewis McGibney and Beth Hopper from the Semantic Tech Committee. We're also connecting to an ontology that we're developing with UN Environment to connect data, information, and knowledge to the Sustainable Development Goal process. 
to build a bridge between what we do in the scientific field and other fields and the language and narrative of the SDGs. We are particularly concerned about that because the decade of ocean science for sustainable development is approaching fast. So in a sense, we need that interface to be able to declare how our data fits into the SDG agenda. Um, that's something to keep in mind. So what do we do? Again, that was a great slide this morning by, by, um, by Adam just showing that we have to be careful about not reinventing standards. So we approach existing standards. Here you see the CMEX standard used popularly in the US. And what we do with these ontologies, we express them in a more machine readable form. So for example, we look at a CMEX term down there and then open it up. Open it up in such a way using logical constraints that are understood by AI agents called reasoners, so they can go through this graph, um, and they'll understand what that is. So we work with CMEX, they make sure that what we're doing aligns to their model, and we're developing from that cycle. Once we do that, we can start tagging the best practices in oceanbestpractices.net with semantic resources describing environments, chemicals, and SDGs, as, long, um, as well as BODC vocabularies, uh, L5 and L6, for sensors and cellular platforms, creating interoperability through a knowledge model. Right? So that's our little stack that we have there. So the flow will look something like this. It does look something like this. It's implemented. BP developers create the best practices. They can publish it in a journal that we collaborate with, um, and they can submit it to oceanbestpractices.net. Once it's in the system, it's available to the ontologies and vocabularies that we merge into a triple store, an RDF triple store, and put into a tagging module, which, will, which is able to look inside those documents at their text and tag them with ontology terms. The tagging takes place after a raw text extraction, and we then present that through a search interface that combines semantic and elastic search. And it links back to the, um, the documents in oceanbestpractices.net. So that's .org and that's .net. Um, the, Parts in asterisks are developed by a great team at Element 84, who are really grasping this very, very well and creating wonderful interfaces. This is what it looks like right now. You can visit it. This is oceanbestpractices.org, the interface to oceanbestpractices.net. Um, you can search for a term in there, and if that term is indexed in Envocabies, SDGIO, or soon L5 or an L6, it'll look through that archive. If it's not, it'll use Elasticsearch to find documents anyway. Once you get your results, it looks like this. You see on the left, my right, your left, um, the ontology tags and the ontology that they came from present with any given search results if you click on the viewing tags module. You can also go right into the document to see where those tags are. So you can go very quickly to sections of best practices, which sometimes can be hundreds of pages, to find the content that you're looking for. Those tags also allow you to access the ontology content and open it up. For example, here we have chlorophyll A in Kebi, and then we look at a little semantic neighborhood around that to see what is related to chlorophyll A. Um, for example, here what its functional parents are, its conjugate acids, and its chemical subgroups. That works for the environments and the SDGs. All right, then together, you can click on any one of those terms to broaden or um, restrict your search, thereby leveraging knowledge models that are already present. To ensure it's fit for purpose, we reverse the flow too, and we actually text, we're text mining the best practices. Uh, this will be implemented in the next phase of our development, which we're just kicking off now, to text mine the best practices to make sure that the contents of the ontologies are actually reflecting the contents of the best practices submitted. So the Ocean Ops community is, um, is supported. Right, so that's, that's what we have, our concluding remarks. We're, we're getting there. We're really on the way to using ontologies in a user-friendly way and also harvesting knowledge from the community to make sure they're fit for purpose. And our future is as it's laid out. It's, it's fairly logical. We'd like to incor incorporate more semantic technology and vocabularies, develop work cycles so that we're, um, we're integrated in our development pattern. We'd like to then engage with more researchers who are doing natural language processing and tagging to improve how those best practices are developed, and then create a community around it, which you can hear much more about um, tomorrow. In the future, a best practice will probably look something like this, fully structured, machine-readable, schema.orgified, and you'll be able to query it in a much more granular way. We're not there yet, but that's what we keep in mind. And if we do that, and what we're also hoping to do in the next phase, is start linking the contents and the semantic markup of best practices to data stores themselves. So you can then look at data associated with best practices or connected to essential ocean variables or SDGs. There's a lot on the table. Right, that's it. Um, a lot of people to acknowledge don't have time to go through it, of course, but uh, 
any questions, I'm happy to uh, address. <coughs>